WFM 91.7. It's Women Radio WFM 91.7. Welcome to Her Voice. I am Bukola Balugun. And um, on Her Voice, we're going to be looking at Agenda 2023, breaking the circle of female exclusion, rather. And Her Voice is a deliberate program that condemns all forms of violence and discrimination against women and girls. Her Voice is an initiative of Women Radio 91.7, in partnership with Action Aid Nigeria, supported by Global Affairs Canada. And uh, this morning, I have with me over the... F- I have two guests who I'm going to be talking to right now, but um, I'm going to be having... Over the phone right now with me is... Um, I have with me right now Ogwadima Ijoma Joy. She is the founder, executive director... Uh, WPBI. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. It's good to have you with us this morning. But um, yes, going into the introduction of the conversation, women around the world face especially high hurdles of participating in politics and being included in government. But political transition are a moment of breaking patterns of exclusion. At the same time, political transition do not automatically facilitate greater gender equality in politics. They also can lead to women's renewed marginalization and understanding why and how parties integrate or exclude women in crucial for, is crucial for preventing patriarchy and low representation in 2023. And just like I stated earlier, we're going to be looking at Agenda 2023, Breaking the Circle of Female Exclusion. But um, uh, right now, I'm coming, to, I'm coming to you, Joy. I would just like to know your own perspective about women inclusion in politics in Nigeria presently and looking at it from the 2023 uh, election coming up. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. You know, I, whenever I, 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 they call me to speak about women and the participation in politics, it gives me joy. Because if you see what is happening in the country, you see that a lot of women, it's as if women are being marginalized. Women are not really participating in politics the way it should be. And it's as if that there is, a magic, there is a boundary that women cannot cross to this extent. I was, on, I was on air the other time last week. So someone called and said that a woman is not supposed to be a governor. That if a woman become a governor, then what would they be calling the husband? And if a woman becomes the president, what would they be calling the husband? I was like, what kind of, what, what, what kind of conversation is this? So what of other countries that are women are president, and those countries are doing very well. I'm telling you that women participation in politics in Nigeria is not really is not is not really fair. It's as if that there are there are positions that women are not supposed to get. That if women get to this uh, age, is not is not workable. Or once even if you cannot, you hardly see deputy governors with women becoming deputy governors because they believe that ha. Huh, so how can a woman get to this extent? So I will say that women participation in politics in Nigeria is not women inclusion in politics is very very important in Nigeria, which we need to make sure that we work towards that. And the way we are we are training women, making sure that women are really coming out to you know training them, giving them the orientation by 2023 that a lot of women will be able to come out to say they want to fight for um, some posts and they will be able to get that. And they, I know that the, the way we are going as time goes on, if we get the support, we'll be able to get there by 2023. Mm. All right. Thank you very much um, for that. But then I would, I would actually like us to look at, um, you know, rules and party structures when it has to do with promoting women participation in politics. So I would like to get your own opinion. Do you think uh, that there have been laws and, um, you know, structures that are in place in, uh, in political parties, are they friendly enough for women inclusion in politics? 
I don't think it's friendly because if it is friendly, a lot of women will be coming out. I had a conversation with some of the some of the past members. Let me call. Let me not call them. So mm. they told me in their in their party that they get they give they give they always give women nom- nomination. That nomination form is free according to them. That nomination form is free. That which one is free? So that is not their fault that women are not coming out to you know vie for any electoral position. I say no. You said that you are giving women all these things. So when I ask them, okay, fine, you are giving them all these um free things. So why is it that women don't really come out to participate or vie for any post? If this thing now that you said is really available for them, so are you? Is, is this something that you are going to give someone? You give somebody this post, you take this thing, and also wait the person at the back to bite the person. Because this is what I see. It's not fair, because if it is fair, you will not tell me, for instance, now, that I am called to come as a contest for House of Assembly or whatever in my state. Then I go there, they say, okay, take this position in, go out, take the form, go and buy for it. And a lot of people will also be trying to pull me down from there. So you can't just see that it's not, it's, it's not really fair. It's supposed to be that let us go and purchase this thing, then give us the, a, the support that we need. So it's not by telling us that uh, women, they have the, the that they, they are giving them nomination uh, fee, a nomination form for fee. Yes, which backing are they getting from that? So it's not fair. It's not fair at all. And something needs to be done concerning that. Uh, at times, as you are discussing, mm. I also share my ideas with you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much all for that. I would like to get your contribution on the program this after uh, this morning on Her Voice 07000 917 is a studio line to call to be a part of Her Voice. You can send us a WhatsApp or a text message on 070 317 965 and send us a WhatsApp or a text message to 070 three one seven five six five three seven and this morning we have been discussing on agenda twenty twenty three breaking the cycle of female exclusion and I still have with me Agudi Aguadima Ijeoma Joy. She is the founder of um she's the founder and executive director of women empowerment, education and peace building initiative. And she hasn't able to help us out this morning with the topic that we are discussing about. But then I would I would actually like to hear some of the uh some of the ideas that you have regarding, you know, ensuring that we have more women you know, vying for political positions and as well as um how we can attain that political inclusion that we desire for women in political positions especially. Okay, thank you very much. I think one of the ideas I need to share with you is we need more of mentorship. We need more of training. A lot of women in my state where we are we are we, we are we are doing a project on increasing women participation in politics in any world state. So when we did a, a some when we did a focus group discussion, we asked them what do you think are really the factors that militate women participation in politics in Nigeria, not just in Enugu. So you see we, we have a lot of things some say, some of them said that is lack of education, some of them said is a, a tradition and culture, some of them said that is um marginalization, that men call them all sort of names. If anybody comes out to participate for a, a, if any woman comes out to participate in politics, they call them all sort of names, and they will tell the husband, please, back out, make sure that your wife did not continue, that very soon she will become a prostitute and the rest of them. But from all the indications, after that, bring the information and the rest of them. So we started, we know that one of the things that we know, we have seen that are really in making women not to participate in politics or don't even believe in politics is lack of orientation. They, they need more of orientation. And we started this, you know, we, we, we started a leadership training, we started a pet talk, 
you know, there's all kinds of training for them. And it's today, those women are really picking up and they have interest in politics. So one of the one of them is, is giving them that training they need. And the second, another one is giving them the opportunity and the support that they, they need to vie for any post. Some of them said, uh, one of them, the one person said uh, that gender zoning, if that we can do a gender zoning for women, so they will say that this, um, this particular post are for women that if we can use this uh, if we, if women if a man is a, a, a chairman then a woman be a, a woman be a deputy if a man be a governor a woman or they say this year men have a uh, vie for their or the, the men have become chairman and rest of them then this period let a woman go for chairman let them contest for it anybody that wins goes i think it's one of the is a very good idea because if we do that gender zone and the rest of them is going to help us women to really know what they want and come out because when they give the orientation number one is giving them that orientation mentorship and mm. of women, we need mentorship i'm being honest with you okay we really need mentor yes in the, one of the local government that we are working the first time i went to that local government the traditional the, the, the traditional leader in the, in the, he doesn't want to see us he said that we should leave this community but we, we came to corrupt his women and the rest of them mm. ah, it was like a talk it was like a war he said that i will call my people no, if we should leave us want to come and cor- corrupt our women and the rest of them mm. i said okay when i came back to the house i i, I had to replan myself i told my program officer we are going to go back that we are going to explain more the the same thing that i need to hear my program officer was like how do we do this i said let's go first i now called him again i said i I, you know i i greeted him he he said my daughter how i say i want to come and see you again he said if it is because of politics that i don't want that you people want to corrupt our women Mm. i said you know that i'm coming for another thing so when I came there, we started discussing. I started using him because I, I, it was not going to call that I called her name. You know, I used him as an instance. I used her as an instance. Mm. Because to Igwe, the traditional leader, I was like, wow. And I said, Igwe, do you know that this, man, this woman is married and she's in her husband's house? He was like, are you serious? I said, yes. You know, I now came down to Lake Dora community. I said, you see that this, you know that the woman is still in her, was in her house, that she was doing all this thing, and she was married. And she said, yes, so it's true. And I said, so Igwe, how will you see it now that tomorrow? The wife is one of the people, you know, that make things matter in, in the society. Mm. Yes. He oh. said, yes, he said, that will be love you. You know, I just hit the point. I said, okay, if we, that is why we are here. Mm. Why we came to make sure that women, he, do you know what he, when I asked him, he said, please, my daughter, what do you think that we need to do uh, that, to make sure that my wife is one of the people, all these women that come out on, in television and mm. speak people away? I said, yes, now you came. Oh. I said, if we, they need mentorship, they need this one. Do you know that they, that if the traditional leader is campaigning that they would let that be women inclusion in everything they are doing. Mm. That traditional, yes, that traditional leader have women now in their Igwe's cabinet. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much for elaborating on this. And I'm really so happy that you used real life experiences that are happening. And thank you very much for joining us on Her Voice this afternoon. Thank you very much. It's All right. With you. Yes, do enjoy the rest of your day. All right, bye. Yes, thank you. And um, yes, we just spoke to, we just spoke to right now, Oguadima Idioma Joy. She is the founder and executive director of Women Empowerment Education and Peace Building Initiative. And she was able to enlighten us on some of the reasons why we have, um, you know, we don't really have proper inclusion of women in politics. And she gave her an idea on how, uh, you know, we can have more women in political positions, which is very, very important. She made mention of a key point, which is mentoring, which is very, very important. But shortly, I'll be joined by Hannah Bassi. She's the president, Young Women in Politics, Cross River Chapter. She's going to be joining us also in this conversation. And this morning, 
we have been discussing on Agenda 2023, Breaking the Circle of Female Exclusion. And it's her voice on Women Radio 91.7 that you're listening to. Let's get your own contribution. We have the 2023 election around the corner. We have more women, you know, getting involved in, we have more women getting involved in um, political positions. And we have, um, uh, we, we have a number of them who are at this point, probably because of previous experiences, trying to say, oh, no, I'm not sure. I really want to get involved in that. But then it is very important that women are not excluded from being from participating in politics and that is why we are here and that is why we keep talking about it and um, it is very important that we have um, women in political positions are you one of those people who actually think that uh, women shouldn't actually be part of politics now let, let's make some analogy we have women who actually make up about um, 50% of the world's population, of, of Nigeria's population rather. And you can imagine not having these people not being a part of the integral, uh, you know, positions in the society. Now, when we talk about politics, we have those in decision-making positions. We have those who are appointed into different positions just to make things work for the country. Now, if you now have a greater percentage of those people not included in positions that has to do with politics. How do you expect such a country to develop and have women, uh, you know, uh, be heard in the society? And that is what we are trying to make sure that we achieve, making sure that women are heard in the society. I have with me right now Hannah Bassi. She's the president of Young Women in Politics, Cross River uh, State Chapter. Good morning, um, Hannah. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And you? I'm very well, thank you. All right. It's good to have you this morning. And we have been discussing about um, some of the reasons why, um, you know, we have less women in political positions. I would just like to get to hear from you. What do you think could be, could have been the reason or is the reason for having, uh, you know, at this point, it seems we, we are declining in the number of women who are included yeah. in political positions. So why do you think this is? Oh, first of all, this has been like a patriarchal system where um, we, um, people, they just do things in the way that men are the ones that are seen to be in the hem of affairs when it comes to politics. And also, um, we did a program and we got to get... Um, answers and concerns from women who have run for office and they gave their concerns in terms of the very high price to buy the form or the ticket to run for office, the price, and also the intimidation they get from men and also sometimes they don't get support from fellow women. Mm. And Yes, and also um, there is just this belief that maybe the woman will be good as an assistant and maybe in the party system she's like the women's leader for the party, treasurer. She's not, you know, really given the opportunity to handle the real office, to get the real meat. So that is one of the big problems that we have but we are beginning to see that it is not true women are able to be able women are able to you know handle positions of leadership and they can do very well mm, okay thank you very much um, for that but then how do you think we can begin to break um, you know all of these barriers how do you think you can begin to break all of the ceilings that seeming more like you know they are they are, they are preventing women from thriving when it has to do with inclusion in politics I think we have to start talking about it, advocacy, meeting INEG, meeting the political parties and say, okay, what did you what what do you think we should try out the new thing? What because the men have disappointed us in some ways, how about we try something new? How about we try the women and see how they can, you know, run for office? And also we can also one important thing is see how we can get pressure groups of fellow women to support women because I feel that most times in the election the grassroots women are very powerful. Like in Cross River City we have some grassroots women groups who are very powerful and they support the men. If we can do like a 
mind change, your mind reset, and tell them, how about you use this energy? Enough of the rice, the salt, the maggi you get. How about you say, okay, today we are going to support women. And we say, okay, yes, this is our candidate, and we are going to support her. All the women come out. I'm telling you, if we come out with that force, we are going to see a change. So advocacy is very key, and I believe that we should empower more women political, political groups. It's going to help out. All right. Thank you very much. But then I'll have to let you go now, but I would like to get your final words with all that we have spoken about today. Okay. So for my final words, I would like to say that um, women should be given the opportunity to run for office because I believe that we have what it takes to do a better job. And when you empower a woman, you power the generation, you power the nation. So I believe that women should be given the chance to run for office. And fellow women, please, when you see a woman come out to run for office, Please support her in any way you can. Mm, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much um, for joining us uh, this morning. Thank you. Thank all you for right. Yes. And that was um, Hanan Basi. She is the president, Young Women in Politics, uh, Cross River State chapter. But then in conclusion, it is very important that um, as we approach the 2023 election, we need to break the circle of female exclusion in governance of Nigeria. Women representation in the last general election in 2019 was low, and we need to have a better level representation in 2023. As women, let's think of repositioning to put the best women forward and then support her so that uh, she can win. The time to start is definitely now. There's no other time for us to begin this than to start off now. But then I want to say thank you to the production team, Victoria Owaifo, Sarah Inoue, uh, Sanusi Adebanke, and um, Shegun Adebayo. Thank you very much for helping out with the production. And um, her voice is an initiative of Women Radio 91.7 in partnership with Action Aid Nigeria and supported by Global Affairs Canada. Until next time, definitely till I come your way, I am Bukola Balugu. To make sure that you have a productive day.